Hello. Today I will show you how to detect and count multiple shiny objects using OpenCV. First we will go through basic steps just to understand the fundamentals. And after that we will modify the code automating most of the processes leaving us just with a decision on how many different objects we want to count. Let's start with a short plan of what we're going to do. First, we will prepare the video setup for our camera. Next, we will define the window where we will put the object we want to detect and count. After that, we will create a function to detect the shiny object. In this part, we will extract objects by our selected object. We will use the array as a selection parameter. After that, we will draw contours on objects according to the selected object and count contours according to the selected object. We will finish by modifying the code for multiple object detection. Let's go into the code. We will start by preparing the video setup. It's very basic, so I will explain only the main parts. First, we need to import the OpenCV library. Next, we need to initiate the window capture. In brackets, we add 0 plus cv2 dot cap d show. Most of the time your camera will be auto-detected using zero and that should be enough. Next, knowing that video is just a bunch of images or frames, we need the while loop to go through them. We write while true and init underscore comma frame equal to cap dot read to read all our frames. I also will add one more line to rotate my video by 180 degrees. Use this line if your camera is rotated 180 degrees like mine. Next, let's make a copy of the frame and name it result. Here, as the name suggests, we will show our results. Next, we need to show it. For that, we write cv2.imshow and in brackets we add window name, result, and what we want to display, it will be a result. What's left is to add a couple of lines which will help us close the window and stop the code. We add if condition to close the window when the escape button is pressed. If a condition is true, it will break the loop, and we finish by destroying all windows. Let's run the code. Ok, there are no errors and we can see the camera video. Let's move to the next part. In this part, we will define the window where we will put the object we want to detect and count. First, let's go to the while loop and define the object window. It will be a rectangle. The top left corner at 100 and 100 coordinates. And the bottom right corner at 200 and 200 coordinates. Next, let's define that object's color. Let's make it pink. Now let's add a new function to select our object in a window, which we will create in a moment. Input will be our already defined object window and object color. Ok, let's create that function. Function input will be the object's window and color. Next, we will draw that window using the rectangle function. We will draw a result frame. Rectangles top left and bottom right corners we will get from window input. Next will be color, line thickness 2 and line type. After that, we will crop this window for object detection. For cropping, we will use list slicing. In cropping, first we need to define y coordinates from 2, from 100 to 200, and next x coordinates from 2, from 100 to 200. And that cropped frame we will assign to object variable. What's left is to return that object. We can show that cropped frame using another I'm show method. Let's run the code and see. In the main window we have an object selection window, and in a new window that cropped objects window. It's time to detect that object. In this part, we will create a function to detect the shiny object. We will start by detecting an object in our object selection window. For that, we will need the NumPy library. Let's import NumPy as NP. Let's create a new function named createMask. Input will be the image. Ok, so how to detect the silver object? A silver object or gray object has no saturation. So it will be the main thing that will help us detect the silver object. First we will convert BGA color space to HSV and extract the saturation channel. Next we will blur the image using Gaussian blur. 
After that, you will use threshold and at the same invert the image. We will subtract from 255. And finally, we will get the mass by deleting it. Also, don't forget to return the mask. Now we can go to the while loop and call the create mask function. Input will be our object. And finally, let's change the object mask in the I'm show method to see the result. Ok, we have a separate window with the extracted object's mask, and it works quite well. Let's move to the next part. In this part, we will extract objects by our selected object. In our case, all our objects are silver and with different shapes, so we can use the array as a selection parameter. We will detect all silvered objects and count them according to the selected object area. For that, we will create a function to calculate the area of our selected object. Let's name it calculate area and add input, image, mask and the color. To calculate the area, first we need to detect the contour of the object. We will use the find contours function and our input will be mask. Next, we can calculate the contour area. For that, we will go through all detected contours and then calculate the contour area. What next we will do is, we will draw these contours. And we finish by returning the contour area. Ok, let's move to the while loop and call our new function. We know that it will return the area, so let's print it. Let's run. Ok, we can see that area is printed. It's not scaled, but in this case it's not a problem because we just need the difference between the different object areas. If we will try to remove the object, the code will stop due to an error. The reason is that function needs to return some area and there is none, so it breaks. Let's fix this. Let's go back to the function. We will add a try accept block to catch the error. We will try to return the counter area and if it fails, we will just pass. Let's see now. Now we can remove the object and we don't have any errors. And if we return the object, the code runs as supposed to. We don't need this print statement anymore, let's delete this. And we can comment the show mask part, we won't need it for now. In this part, we will draw contours on objects according to the selected object. For that, we will create a new function called draw contours. Inputs will be image, mask and area. It will be very similar to the calculate area function. First, we will detect the contours. Next, we will loop through these contours and calculate the area of each contour. After that, we will use the if condition to draw the contours of which areas fall in our defined range of our selected object area. Also, as we learned previously, we need to use a try accept block to avoid the error. Ok, so we write try and our if condition. We will subtract and add 20% to the selected object area to be our range. If the area is in that range, we draw the counter. We finish with the accept block where we just pass. Now let's move to the while loop where we create a mask for the frame and put this mask as input into the draw counters function. Let's run the code. We have contours around selected objects. We have four objects. We will count them in the next part. In this part, we will count contours according to the selected object. We will add a counter in the draw contours function. First, we will add a starting count value at the beginning of the function. Next, we will add count increment after a rare condition. What's left is to return the count. We add it at the end of the function. Let's move to the while loop. Here we can assign a count to the draw counters function to get the count from this function. What's left is to display that count in the object selection window. Also, we can display the number of the object selection window. Let's display it in the top left corner and count in the bottom left corner. Also, don't forget to change input values to string format. Ok, let's test it. We have count equal to 4 and window number is 1. And all counters on selected objects are drawn. 
we are done with this part. In this part, we will modify the code for multiple object detection. We also automate most of the process, leaving us just with a decision on how many different objects we want to count. Ok, let's move to the while loop. If we would need to detect more than one object, we would need to duplicate the code lines for object window creation and selection. Also, we would need to duplicate or modify VS lines. As you can see, it would be a lot of duplication and redundant code. What we want is to move, modify or replace the code lines with the main function, which will give us the selected object mask and would need as input just frame and object count. Let's try the three objects. Also, let's comment on code lines we want to move for while loop. Ok, let's move outside the while loop and create the main function with input window and object count. Let's move this object window creation and selection code lines in the main function and uncomment them. Ok, so what we know for sure is that we will need to repeat these lines as many times as we have objects. So let's add follow with a range of object count and move these lines inside the loop. Ok, but what we can see is that it will create the same object window with the same color. Let's change that. Let's create a new window down, for that we will add i times 100 to y coordinate. The color we can change to something like this. Else will stay the same. The problem will be later when we will need to count different objects. We will need to know the area to know which object to count and what color to give. For that let's create new variable list named parameters and add object area and color to it. Also, don't forget to initiate the parameters in an empty list at the beginning of the function. Ok, let's see what we need to do next. We have a mask and count, let's move them. Mask will stay the same, we just need to change the frame to window. And in count, we need to change object area to parameters. We will modify the draw contours function in a moment. Let's move next. What's left in this function is to put text. For that, we will use the try accept block. Let's write try and add for loop in a range of object count. Next, we need to know where to put the text. So we need to duplicate the object window line to get the window's positions. And after that, we can move put text lines. I will reform these lines to be fully visible. Ok, now let's modify what we want to show. First, we will change that one to i plus one. Second, we will add square brackets of i to the account. And we finish with accept pass and return the mask. Ok, now we can go back. We need to modify the draw counters function because now we will have parameters as input. Here we change the area with parameters. Next we can delete the count and an empty list of counter because we will count multiple objects. Next after counters let's add param equal to parameters. It will be easier for us to follow. And the delta of 0.2. We will use it for array range. As you can see we had 0.8 and 1.2, which is 0.2 from 1. Because now we will be dealing with multiple objects, we need for loop here too. For i in range of length of param, and we move everything below to be inside. Next, we can rewrite this area if condition like this. The area we will get from param with indexing of 0 and our area range we now write like this. 1 minus delta and 1 plus delta. The color we also need to change to param with indexing of 1. And count we will change to counter dot append i. So basically we will have a list filled with the same numbers for the same object. Before finishing with the counter, we can change pass to print statement adding an exception that a specific object is not defined. Ok. Now we can finish with the counter. 
we will use the count function to count the same numbers and put them in a dictionary. We also will need to return the new counter. Let's move to the while loop, delete this empty line and then comment the show mask code line and change the object mask to mask. And that's it. We can run the final code. We have a mask in the result window. Also, we can see that object 2 and object 3 are not defined. Let's add a second different object. We can see that it is detected and counted. And add the third different object. It is detected and counted as well. Thanks for watching. Hope you liked this video. If you have any questions, leave them in the comment section. You will find the code in the video description. If you liked this video, please leave a like and hit the subscribe button for more Python videos.